What is my advice on meditation? My most important advice? Well, hopefully you understand what I mean when I say meditation. Meditation is dhyana or jhana. That means you can't practice meditation. Meditation is a result. Meditation is a state that you enter. You practice mental development. You practice purification of the character. You practice one-pointedness. And as the one-pointedness becomes more stable, then perhaps you enter meditation. Very few people, a very, very small percent of the people that apparently practice meditation ever enter meditation. I've taught many people, but it's still only a small handful of people that have entered the jhanas. It's not easy and you have to gear your lifestyle towards it. So my advice for it, of course, is to follow the teacher's instruction for mental development and one-pointed practice. But what's important? You have to have a, attraction, affection, towards the meditation object. And you need to be a pleasant place to be. So my advice is to develop these qualities, to become pleasant and to develop interest and attraction and affection towards the object of meditation. So the first thing that we always develop is the posture, to be able to sit for extended periods of time in comfort. Now that might seem like a paradox, because the way I train you is to endure, not move, don't change your posture, which is very painful. It's the opposite of comfort. But the result is that you can stay in your given posture for a long time, and it's a pleasant physical place to be. So this is very fundamental. If you don't develop this, it's impossible to enter into meditation. Now you want your body to be a pleasant place to be. So things like opening the body, stretching the body, allowing the body to become released, make the body a pleasant place to rest. If the body's unpleasant, you always try to escape the body. If your posture is unpleasant, you always try to escape your posture. So that will stop you from achieving one-pointedness at all, let alone extended one-pointedness that then allows you to enter into dhyana or jhana. Now equally as important, if not more important, that your mind must become a pleasant place to be, a pleasant abiding. The first step to that is to have some kind of moral life. It's not because of an outer force that will punish you. It's because if you aren't living up to a set of standards that you have deep down naturally inside your own conscience, then you will run away from your own mind because of subtle guilt. You'll have aversion towards staying in your own mind. And ultimately, when you enter meditation, which is absorption, yes, you go through the meditation object, but truly you're absorbing into your own consciousness, into your own mind. So it has to be a pleasant place to rest. Therefore, a moral life is absolutely necessary. Now, truth is probably one of the most important things. If you don't cultivate truth and always speak the truth, I guarantee you, you will never, never enter true meditation. Because of the friction and static and guilt, everything uncomfortable created inside your own mind. So this is a big problem in these times where it's become 
the fashionable norm to deny truth and to lie. So you need to make the body a pleasant place to be. Your posture, a pleasant place to be. Your mind, through moral conduct, a pleasant place to abide. And then you must develop attraction and interest towards the meditation object. When you're interested in something, it's easy to get lost in it. For example, if you love Tai Chi and you're doing the form and you're obsessed with the details of the form and you just get absorbed naturally and lost in the form. But if somebody asks you to study something you have no interest in, to watch it, maybe you have no interest in mechanics and you have to watch somebody working on an engine, boy, if you're stiff, you're not interested, of course you're not going to be absorbed into it. You're going to drift off, the mind will be everywhere else except on the object of attention. So if your meditation object is the breath, it's not just enough to watch the breath. You have to appreciate the breath. You have to love the breath. The breath gives you life after all. The breath is your access to prana. It affects the mental state. So you can contemplate the breath in ways that make you think that the breath is special and important so that you have more affection towards the breath. Make your breath gentle and pleasant. Whatever the meditation object is, whether it's breath or a place in the body or whatever it is, develop affection towards it. Now, if you do these two things, develop the pleasantness in your body and mind and develop affection and attachment towards the meditation object, then you'll be able to stay with it longer. So if you've been practicing and you've achieved the prerequisite levels of mental development, step by step, until you have some one-pointedness, one-pointedness in the beginning won't last very long, but at least you can get there. And then as it extends and deepens, gradually everything else will fall away because it's pleasant, it's attractive, your mind wants to go there and it absorbs in and you'll enter dhyana or the jhanas, which is meditation. Everything leading up to that point is not meditation. It's mental development. So this is my advice on what's important for developing meditation.